You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Ladies, how y'all doing? It is your girl, your diva, and knowledge lady Mocha represent Mocha's Ladies Lounge. Hope everybody's doing well. First of all, let me start off by saying I thank each and every one of y'all for y'all patience. Had a lot going on. Uh, nevertheless, I give God the glory for giving me the strength to persevere. Had a lot of orders for tumblers for Father's Day. And, um, you know, still trying to help my husband get back on his feet. So, there's been a lot going on. But, nevertheless, I am back in the blog and business, honey. Because, ladies, we got a lot of catching up to do. So, I don't want to spend too much time on everything that I had to catch up on. I felt it was very imperative that I definitely did this content once I got the news that Nene and her uh, married boyfriend... Um, Naomi had decided to call it quits. I don't know if anybody else has been keeping up, but I knew it was only a matter of time now. For those of you who have been subscribed to me for a while, you may not recall, some of you may remember, some of you may not. I posted a picture of Nini with Naomi in my community tab, I'll say probably like a month or some change ago. And if y'all noticed, I was talking about the body language between the both of them. And to me, it, it always appeared to me that Nene was always the one. Um, see, she, she basically was the one who seemed like she was more into him than he was into her. And I, I don't know about y'all. I don't know if it's a Scorpio thing or just being a nosy ass woman thing. I'm not sure, but I've all I always study the body language of couples when they are together. Um, just like with um Martel and um 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 Arian Air Mattress. You know, I would always notice how she would be all over Martel in the pictures, but um, in a vacation pictures, but I never really noticed Martel um, being all over Ariane, you know, so you could always tell when the woman is is the the desperate one in the relationship trying to code it down, keep it together because her image is more important uh, than her well-being. You know, she knows she's low-key miserable with this man. No, she's not really happy, but because, you know, you your ego and you got this reputation to where no one can't tell you nothing, you know, you don't want to make it look like or appear as if you don't have your sugar honey iced tea together. But I've been peak game from the very beginning um, that Nene was in the struggle love with Naomi and it finally hit a breaking point in which you, you she just couldn't fake the funk anymore it, it becomes unbearable when you try to fake the funk with these men who you know obviously don't share the same amount of love for you that you share for them so nevertheless y'all you know it's way more to this than what meets the eye and i truly believe that nene leaks is getting back all of her karma because this is not her first time this is her second time so far that we know of in which nene leaks has been involved with somebody else's husband and you would think after um being married to greg who was also a married man and seeing how her luck played out with him that she would be more mindful and more careful not to repeat the same mistake and get right back into the same situation so 
nevertheless, in order for y'all to really understand, because I don't think a lot of people really know, Greg Leakes was a married man. I repeat, Greg Leakes was a married man. Now, I don't know how many of you ladies out there are NeNe fangirls or uh, fans of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, but uh, this has gotten past a lot of people. But if you are nosy like me or a Scorpio like me, <laughs> you will know that NeNe took Greg from his wife, Lori Leakes, way back in the day. And no one has really talked much about this. No one really stresses this. This has gotten past a lot of people, except those who personally know NeNe, like her family, um, people who grew up with her back in Athens, Georgia. Um, NeNe is getting back this karma for the second time. In the words of NeNe, keep your legs closed to married men. Um, NeNe looks like she needs to take her own advice. She needs to practice what she preaches because this is the second time she has gotten involved with somebody else's husband. So, let's go back in order to move forward. We have first have to look back and see what led up to this while all of this karma has been coming back to collect on, on, on NeNe's debt because NeNe, he, she, she's pretty much been her success has pretty much been going downhill y'all it's been one it's been one downfall after another you know getting booted from bravo um not winning the settlement i thought she had won that settlement y'all come to find out um it's been confirmed she has not won no settlement through bravo at all not as of yet which makes sense because she had to sell her home and um, give up a lot of things. So it makes sense that she did not technically win that money from Bravo yet. So, um, like I said, the you know, getting booted from Bravo, still not getting that settlement. Um, then on top of that, you know, uh, after losing her husband, you know, you, you would have thought she would have humbled herself. You know, it seemed like after she lost Greg, everything else just... Um, she just kept losing more after she lost him. Like I said, getting booted from Bravo, the settlement. Then she turns around and meets another married man, gets involved with, um, Nio, I think his name is Nioni, Nioni Sila Sayo. I'm going to just call him Nioni, um, because I, I'm not going to butcher the man's name. And, um, uh, I, I, I don't want to give put my tongue in the overdrive trying to say that throughout every paragraph but um it was only a matter of time and that uh Naomi and Nini was going to break up I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did honey but I keep speaking and preaching on this type of content because a lot of women need to understand that putting themselves in a side chick position when you're when you're getting involved with other married men you bring a curse upon yourself you bring a curse to your success you bring a curse to your love life and you basically bring a curse to your integrity and your self-esteem so all of a sudden now that this breakup has been made public supposedly nini wants to transition into the soft girl era which is a, a bunch of garbage to me but i'll explain that later right now we're going to get into the steak and the potatoes of this so lenithia monique johnson better known as nene leaks the real mvp of the real housewives of atlanta television personality has gone from stardom to star dumb Dumb meaning D-U-M-B by her ego, arrogance, ignorance, and wicked ways. Okay. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 11. I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for the inequity. I will put an end to the pomp of the arrogant and lay low the pompous, the pompous pride of the ruthless. 
So sooner than later, your arrogance, your cockiness, um, your superiority will eventually be the demise of your success, you know. And that's basically what has happened with Nini. Nini went from the woman we used to love to the woman we simply just can't stand anymore. Nini became popular for her reads, her wittiness, her sharp tongue shade, and her will let a bitch have it crappy crabby snappy rude attitude that was once fun funny and entertaining and eventually became annoying and an overkill so nini struck loud of y'all when she first became part of one of bravo's biggest successful franchise the real housewives of atlanta back in 2008 she was born in queens new york but raised in athens georgia she's one of five children um she, she, he, she and one of her brothers were sent to live um, with the honor Athens, Georgia, while the other three stayed with the mother. It was believed that her mother could not take care of all five, which has since been debunked based on the interview with her biological sister, Kenya, which interview I will play within the content momentarily. Um, after Nini attended college for two years, she became pregnant with her oldest son, Bryce, and the rest is history. So it's been this narrative going around that, uh, and that was the narrative being promoted on the show that Nene and her mom did not have the best of the relationship. Now, I don't know if that narrative was uh, uh, pushed. That way, her storyline would be a little bit more dramatic or if she's actually lying um, about her mother not caring for her or not um, wanting to take care of her because Kenya said that... Um, that the sister, Nini's biological sister, made that very clear that um, that was not the case, that um, Nini actually chose and wanted um, to live with the aunt. So, you know, allegedly, there's no uh, solid um, claims to, to, to dispute that, but that's the narrative that supposedly that was pushed throughout the show, but uh, Nini's biological sister says different. So, um, Greg and Nene, they tied the knot in 1997, but many people don't know. And what Nene failed to share, as much as she likes to read, folks, was that Greg Leakes was a full-pledged married man. Greg has five other children from a previous marriage, ex-wife Lori Leakes. This is according to TV Overmind. The children he fathered before he was with Nene are twins Damien and Daryl, two other sons named Dexter and Denton, and a daughter named Katrina. People never knew that Greg had five children and that he was married for all, for really 20 years to ex-wife and mother of all of his children, uh, ex-wife um, Lori. So in the midst of this, Nene did further admit and one of the one one of these interviews that it was very difficult for them to blend the family. She also revealed that Greg and ex-wife went through a very bitter divorce. I would reckon if you took this woman's husband, but you know she didn't say that. And this caused the kids to be put in the middle of it. She literally picked them up for her weekend visit and never brought them back, according to Nene. Um, this is what she said Greg's ex-wife did was took the kids and um never bought him back and Greg didn't fight her so what I'm gathering is Greg's ex-wife Lori um, she caught on right away that Greg was slipping and having an affair committing adultery within the marriage with Nene and what she did was she took her children she took her children and um like Nene confirmed, Greg didn't fight her, meaning he already had made the decision that he wanted to leave his wife to be with Nene. So he didn't try to fight for it. He didn't try to work it out. And um, in some cases, you do have these married men who will leave their wives to be with the other woman. Doesn't happen all the time, but in this case, it did. So, um, Nene further exclaims, Greg just disconnected. 
And when Greg would try to connect with his children, he would call up his ex-wife and ask if he could see the children. She would say no. It was a bitter war. She also confirmed that she had no relationship with her husband's ex at the time of the interview. Nene revealed, in my entire life of being with Greg, I've only met the lady twice. This is a no-brainer. Um, any woman can read in between the lines and see for the way Greg's ex-wife, Lori, reacted that obviously she felt disrespected, which is the reason why she was bitter. Any woman would be when you have your husband of 20 years and you had all your babies, all five of your children, okay, from this one man and he decides he wants to be with this younger woman because you know there's a 13 year age gap between Nene and Greg. So I could only imagine, put yourself in Greg Leak's ex-wife Lori Leak's Put yourself in Lori Leak's shoes. How how could you not be bitter? I, how would you not be bitter? And this man has the audacity, leaves you to be with a younger woman and says, I still want to see my kids. I still want a relationship with my kids. The audacity. See, that's why I said we got to go back. We I, I want y'all to understand what led up to all this karma. What led up to... Greg's demise. You, you, you got to be careful. You got to be careful messing with other women's husband. Be, being part of the of, of, of the breaking of God's covenant. I keep telling y'all marriage is a covenant to God. And this is not to disrespect um, Greg and say he deserved God the way he did. But I will say this. What you do will come back on you. One way or another. You know, so Nene uh, made it clear that her and the woman never had a relationship. No shit, Sherlock. And um, and she's only met the, the, the woman twice throughout the whole duration of being with Greg. Because that woman wanted to keep her peace. She didn't want to keep encountering her husband's mistress. So, um, you know, it's, it's only right. And that's what I said. Everybody wants to feel sorry for Nene. But if only y'all knew. If only y'all knew that Greg never belonged to Nene to begin with. Okay? Greg Leakes was a married man. He already had a wife and five kids in his life. So for those of you who don't know, you know now, Lady Mocha, you hearing it. And I'll say allegedly to be nice, but it is what it is. Okay? He was a married man. All right? Um, and not no married man for no two, three years. 20 years he built a life with this woman. And she's not supposed to be bitter. Child bye. Y'all got issues like Vogue magazine. If you would think you wouldn't be bitter. If your husband 20 years left you for a woman 13 years younger than, than your ex-husband. Come on. So, before he was a reality star, Greg Leakes was a self-taught businessman. And this is according to Bravo um, Biography. The Atlanta native had built up his career by himself when he first met Nene Leakes. Her celebrity network working for two decades as a real estate investor and consultant. On top of the contracts with Bravo, that real estate career helped him earn a net worth of four million. So Nene has pretty much been sweeping under the rug how her and Greg really met. But if any of y'all was paying attention, this didn't get past you like it got past many others. So on Nene's wedding special, y'all y'all probably don't remember. Uh, she had a, 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 a spinoff with Bravo, "I Dream of Nene," um, where her and Greg decided to reunite and um, remarry and redo their vows. So all of his older kids came to her house and they aired their grievances about when Greg left them and their mother. Now y'all may not remember the episode, but I remember it very clearly when um, Nene kind of got into it with one of his sons and um anyway i recall the son well 
all of them really expressing um their grief and how they felt abandoned when he married Nene and had Brent and became more of a father to Bryson, which you know is Nene's other son from a previous relationship. So basically, Greg showed his showed his behind. You know, he left his wife, left his life, left his family life, and just rolled off into the sunset with Nene. Took care of Nene's oldest son like Nene like 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 Bryson was his own nothing is wrong with that but how are you gonna sit up there and abandon all five of your own children and yet your father and somebody else's child okay Greg was foul no disrespect to the dead Greg was foul it was ugly the way he loved his wife and you cared for Nene and her son and and then turn around and had a son of y'all own together. So, according to Damien, one of Greg's son, once Greg married Nene after meeting her at the Gentleman's Club, because allegedly she was a stripper, he kicked all of his kids out of the house. Now, all of this is alleged. This is based on what Greg's, one of Greg's son's statement. Once he met her, he kicked us out the house. According to Damien, the young siblings went to my mom's and he just ran off to start a whole new life literally in front of our faces. So can y'all imagine the betrayal? Imagine as a wife witnessing this and your children are witnessing their father just totally disrespect you in this manner. Damien gave some interviews and blasted his father on several um, radio interviews, but later his story seemed to change and then Kenya Nene's sister said that Nene was creeping with Greg while him and Lori was still married. That was one of the major reasons no one from Nene's first wedding uh, to Greg had attended. But again, I'm going to play um, the clip confirming this. So, for all of you who was not aware of Nene dealing with a married man, not having no remorse for taking him from his wife, Okay, um, I'm going to let Nene's biological sister, Kenya, confirm to this that Greg was a married man. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to play the clip. What are all your names? First of all, my name is Kendall Sherman. And uh, no, let me go back. We're going to do that again. First of all, my name is Kendall Kenya Sherman. Oh, okay. And I'm a hairstylist here in Atlanta. My clients call me Kenya. Okay. Um, in New York, my clients call me Kendall. Hmm. So you, you go Kenya, Kendall. Mm -hmm. It just depends on where you are. It just depends where I am. All right, well, let's cut to the chase and let's be realistic. Okay. Why are you hidden? Like, I watch other reality shows and the reality stars bring their families on. Like, if you see Cynthia, Cynthia brings her sister onto the show. Mm -hmm. Why haven't we really seen you on the Real Housewives of Atlanta or I Dream of Nene show? Well, you know, my sister, um, I believe she has her issues with our family. Wait, wait, wait. You said sister, half sister, full sister. What is Honey, that is my sister. Okay. I'm black. We don't say half. We say sister. Okay. We share the same mom and we share the same dad. Listen, when people say what they have to say about our family, it's okay. Nene knows and I know. Okay. We're sisters. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what you say, but Nene says half sister. Yeah, and maybe because she going Hollywood now, so maybe now that she's Hollywood, I'm considered a half sister. But, but you saying she's going Hollywood, don't you want to be in Hollywood with her? Well, you know, my talent speaks for itself. I don't have to be on her show to show what I got. Fair you use. Know, I myself is a comedian. I'm a hairstylist. I'm a business owner, right. a mother. You know, I run my own salons here in Atlanta and in New York. Okay. So, you know, I can really just do me and put myself on. Okay. So, why weren't you invited to the first wedding or the second wedding? Well, I was invited to the first wedding. I just wasn't in the first wedding. Why not? Well, you know, I really don't know. That's a good question. Maybe we have to ask Nene one day. Now, come on, let's be realistic. So, did you approve of the first wedding? No. Why not? Because well, Greg was a married man. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me the same Nene that told Kim to keep her legs close mm -hmm. to married men was messing with a married man herself? She let the world know it is what it is. 
Everyone knows that. Well, honey, evidently I didn't, so that's something we learned new. Mm. Moving along, let's see. Um, the second wedding, she threw a couple shots on social media saying her sisters, her real sisters. Mm -hmm. She put up pictures of people. I, I heard she met like one of the bridesmaids in a restaurant and walked up to them and asked them to be um, in her wedding, but neither here nor there. I don't know. Why weren't you invited to this second one? Well, because right now we don't even have a relationship. Right now, we're not communicating with each other. Um, yeah, I do communicate on Twitter. Y'all throw shots, I guess. <laughs> well, that's the way Nene likes it. You know, she likes it on blast. She likes for everybody to know. This is how she likes it. You know, I tried to talk to her one-on-one -on -one privately, but she prefers it this way. So this is how we communicate. Oh, she really... So I'm going to pause the brace on that. Um, I will, if hopefully I remember. Um, and if I don't, somebody could leave it in the comment section to put that clip so y'all can watch um, the rest of the interview. But as you can see, uh, Nini's sister Kendra stated that was the first, that was the main reason no one came to her first wedding with Greg. Everybody knew Greg was a married man. He was a married man, slice it, dice it, slap it, flip it, rub it down, um, however you may choose to uh, make it make sense in your mind, but the bottom line was Greg Leakes was a married man, honey, okay, and that's probably part of the reason that um, Nene has always been very discreet about her family. Um, she knows that they know how she got with Greg and they never really supported her on that. So it sounds like to me, um, once Nene met Greg and saw Greg, um, was able to financially dig her, out, get her out of the trenches. Um, she basically, you know, she, she, she dished the family, you know, she, she knew she already took him from her husband and I mean, from some, she took Greg Leaks from somebody else's um, marriage, and then on top of that, Nene was still pretty much struggling at the time. She jumped on the opportunity with Greg right away. She didn't care he was married. She didn't care that her family would disapprove of it. Um, Nene wanted Greg for her own personal selfish reasons, and. This is the reason why a lot of things have transpired and happened the way it has happened. And I don't think Nene gets it or she does not have enough compassion or spirituality to understand the reason she's been catching a bad luck that she's been catching. But I just played the clip and the sister confirmed it, y'all. Greg was somebody else's husband. So... Uh, moving right along, Nene uh, further tries to explain in several interviews, um, I was young when I started dating Greg and he had been married before. I had never been married before and he had children from his previous marriage and I had one child. So we engaged really quick, like six months and we were married like a year later. Now, keep in mind, y'all, Greg was 40 at the time, and Nene was 26, 27 years old. So, this goes to show, y'all, how she ended up into the situation with Naomi. It's no surprise because Nene has done this before. Just like, and I get it, when you're young and you're dumb, you're, you, you're irrational, you think with your hormones, you're thinking with your eyes instead of... um using your common sense and experience, but Nene proves that based off of her past and the way she has handled things um, currently within her life, that Nene will move really quick with these married men and not give it a thought. She don't care who she hurts, who she affects, how the other woman is going to feel. Um, she did this in her 20s, and she's damn near going in her 50s and still doing it, okay? Nene has no respect for other people's marriage, and she has no remorse for what the pain she has caused other women, 
Okay, she's done this with Greg and she's done this with Naomi, which is the reason why her and Naomi ended up breaking up because Naomi was a married man. Now, I don't know if allegedly he got that divorce or not, but we'll go into that later. It don't matter if he did. This is Nene's character. This is how she operates. She don't care if the man is married. If that's what she wants, she got her eyes on him. Once she gets her eyes on the prize, she don't care how the other woman, how other people get affected by what she does. So, I've searched many websites, you know, trying to find pictures of uh, Greg's ex-wife. Now, ironically, um, I have not been able to find any pictures or any information on Greg Leake's ex-wife, Lori. It was an epic fail. I've checked social media sites on all of her children, um, because I know everybody's grown now, and it's been hard to find pictures of Greg Leake's ex-wife. I realized the only reason, um, well, one of the reasons why I couldn't was because a lot of wives back then handled their business different than these women today. Um, they, you know, back then there wasn't no social media. There was, it was harder for um, women to be able to exploit men for their bad behavior. Um, rather if it was their infidelity, rather if you was the wife or the side chick, um, there was no social media. So, um, there was really no way, there wasn't really many ways where you could exploit these men other than back then, you did have women who would actually, side chicks who would, you know, personally make it known. They would, um, depending on the how badly they wanted to be recognized they would actually go to the woman's house or go to the woman's job you know um but even then side chicks back then they wasn't as bold and um as out there as these side chicks today you have to look at the era and the time during and which Nene got involved with Greg. That was in the in the late nineties. So um they were they got married in ninety seven. So back then women handled their business a little different. Now this is not to say adultery never existed, concubines, side chicks, um married men didn't cheat. That has always existed. Even during biblical times there was always concubines and, and, and things of that nature had always existed. But the only difference was um, a lot of women back then, they they was always a lot more discreet. Uh, they never put it all out there. Even wives who was embarrassed or humiliated, they never really blasted their husbands for their adultery. Uh, and again, they didn't have the tools and the instruments to be able to do it as much. So I think based off of how Greg Leak's ex-wife handle her business the fact that she took her kids took uh, yeah took her children from greg and the fact that she never confronted nene which is the reason why nene said well i only spoke to the lady twice first of all that's not a lady that was his actual wife just the fact that seems to me Lori was never messy that's probably the reason there's no pictures or any information that you can easily access access about with her because she's just one of those women she has learned to deal with things in a grown woman manner by not making it more messy or complicated than what it is that's the reason why she took her children she didn't want her children um having to encounter greg's disrespect um and that's the reason why she went through with the divorce she didn't try to fight him for it. She didn't try to make no ways. Um, sounds like to me, Greg's wife, ex-wife Lori, 
was just a woman that was willing to do whatever it took to keep her peace and whatever it took to protect her children. So, um, I believe that's the reason why uh, we we really can't find much information on Lori. Lori hasn't been messy with it. Lori um, never felt the need to have to, um, you know, uh, 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 slander her ex-husband. And I'm sure, you know, she had the opportunity, like many women do, especially once Greg Leaks and Nene Leaks got on the show, I'm sure she very well could have done an interview with a no-name brand blogger or got on some type of show or something. I'm sure she had the opportunity to do that. And I'm sure if she was really a messy type of woman, she would have done that. But just the fact that you cannot find nothing about this woman, there's no pictures of her circulating, there's no interviews where she's airing out Nene and Greg for um, how they disrespected their marriage. Um... It just goes to show me um, that Lori, Miss Lori, has a lot of integrity about herself, and she wasn't allowed to comp, and she was not going to allow Greg and Nene to make her compromise that by being so bitter to the point she's doing the Arian Air mattress, she's writing tell-all books, um, you know, she's um, 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 you know, doing interviews and. And letting everyone know, you know, all of what she went through with Greg. So, she's just really been a grown woman about it. And that's really why you can't find her picture. You can't find any information. Um, This woman took her pain and dealt with it in privacy. And really, that's the grown woman way of handling things, ladies. You know, no matter how hurt you are, no matter how betrayed you have been, and I get it, but... Sometimes you have to be careful with how you allow your pain to lead you because pain can make you embarrass yourself. Ask Arian Air Mattress because a man has denied you of something you wanted and has played with you and used you. Now you walk around with this bitter chip on your shoulder, um, angry with, with everybody, you know what I mean, for, for what you're going through. So I have to give my hats off to uh, Miss Laurie for handling it in a manner in which she did. This woman never had nothing bad to say about Greg or about Nene. And I wish more women had that type of integrity. So, never seen this woman before. Don't see any pictures of her. But what I did hear was allegedly uh, her and Nene look very similar. Okay? And I would not be surprised. She might just be an older virgin. Sometimes these men have a type, you know? Um, he may be into those brown skin, tall women, you know, I don't know, you know what I mean? But um, that's what I heard supposedly, is that they have very similarities in looks. But um, her keeping her composure, and I also heard that she is remarried, allegedly, but her keeping her composure is the reason why she's still alive and well, and she's still close to all of her children. And she's still here. Greg Leakes is not. And, 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 of course, we see Nene has not had the best of luck. So, again, karma always comes to collect. Um, you reap what you sow. And that's just the bottom line. So, nevertheless, you know, uh, like I said, wives back then who got done in dirty, didn't handle things the way women do today, like go through social media. Nevertheless, we know Greg Leakes was married when Nene met him. And seeing the way she got with Naomi, knowing he was married, it shows Nene has no respect for other people's marriage. She won't keep her legs closed to married men. Greg went through a lot with Nene, the way he treated his ex-wife, Lori. Greg had a strained relationship with his children for years. And that was confirmed on Nene's spinoff wedding and show, I Dream of Nene, The Wedding, um, in which one of Greg's sons got, in it, got, got on to Nene, got into it with Nene, blaming her for their parents' separation. Now, I remember the episode, and some of y'all may or may not, if you could remember it, comment in the in a, uh, comment section. 
in which Greg's son got into it with Nene and Nene basically said she was not aware. In other words, she deflected, played crazy, and said she didn't know, and she put the blame on Greg. You know, she said, hey, y'all are upset with me when, in actuality, Greg betrayed me too because he didn't tell me anything. He didn't say he was married. Like, come on, Nene. You knew, ain't no way a man could be with somebody for 20 years that long and you not know he was married. And have five children, and you not know he was not married. That he was married, okay? And I remember Greg, he immediately came to Nene's defense and said it was not her fault. Which, in a sense, he's right, he's, he's right, but he's wrong, he's wrong, but he's right. Meaning, Greg was right as far as, um... It wasn't all Nene's fault due to the fact that Greg was the married man. Nene wasn't. So he made that decision to leave his wife. Nene didn't put a gun to Greg's head and said, you better leave your wife. So he was right in that sense. He left that marriage. He violated that marriage, not Nene. But the fact he deflected by trying to protect Nene as if she didn't know nothing, to me, that was bull. Him and her both deflected on that. Because cause Nene <laughs> didn't want to take the fall. But she's just as responsible as Greg. Even though Greg was the one that was married. But Nene was 26, 27 years old. She knew she still was old enough to know better. But that out of Greg's guilt. And because he does not want his children hating Nene for what he did, he basically, he he called himself taking the blame, taking a fall for it by telling the kids, no, um, don't get mad with Nene. You know, this was, but so many words, he didn't word it exactly like that. But the insinuation was, I'm the one who made this all happen. I made that, I made the, the ultimate decision at the end of the day. That was to get the heat off of Nene because you could tell Greg was always one of those type of husbands that he did not want nobody seeing any wrong in his wife Nene, period. We've seen Nene on the show get out of pocket, get disrespectful, and once or twice throughout all the seasons, Greg checked her. But for the most part, he allowed um, 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 Nene to be wrong all the time and he supported her and he backed her up in her wrongdoing and trust me as a wife as a married woman I get it you know we have a duty to protect our spouse from being ridiculed or being uh, 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 attacked or, 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 or um, you, we, in other words we have the due diligence to protect our mate that, that's just natural instinct. A woman going to protect her husband and a man's going to protect his wife. But where wrong is wrong, wrong is wrong. And you can tell Greg pretty much allowed Nene to have her way on a lot of things on that show. And Nene was always the disrespectful one. And yet he would get up like he got up in Peter's face. Even though Nene called Peter a, the B-I-T-C-H word. And he, and he got all up in Peter's face wanting to go toe to toe. You know, so um, Greg created that monster. He did. He created that monster letting Nene have her way and say and do whatever she wants because for one, Nene younger than him she don't have, he don't have the same energy to, to, to put her in her place, you know. Um, not, not only that, um, tables had turned, you know. At this point in time, you, Nene was the breadwinner. She was the one who started stepping up on him. When, in actuality, when Greg and Nene first got together, Greg was the breadwinner. He the one who had everything. Nene didn't have nothing. So I'm quite sure Greg was very controlling. Um, all this Nene acting like, I'm going to put it all in your face and put you in your place. I doubt she had that same energy when she first met Greg because she was younger than him. So I'm sure in the initial beginning, Greg dominated that marriage. 
And what happened was once Nene ran into some fame and then she got older, now she started being the one putting Greg in his place. And because he wasn't making the money he used to make and now Nene wasn't that little girl who he can control and regulate, he took a lot more off Nene this time compared to what he did when uh, he first initially got married to Nene. But anyway, um, before Nene made it big on the show, Greg was having a lot of problems with successfully being able to keep up with that extravagant lifestyle to please Nene because he was struggling as a real estate agent. Um, so Greg went through a lot. Um, I remember, uh, before they started really running into the money with those Bravo Atlanta housewives checks, um, Nene and Greg was definitely in the struggle. Um, they was making all type of bad investments, bad deals. Um, Greg was doing all of this to try to please Nene. Again, the way you get them is what you got to keep doing to keep them. You got this. You got Nene when she was young, giving her the best of everything, spoiling her, giving her this luxurious lifestyle. Now that she's older, she's still expecting that. So, Nene, so Greg bit off more than he could chew. You know what I mean? Um, by leaving his wife and giving Nene the best of everything because he had to keep supplying that. Um, cause he knew nine times out of ten he would have lost. He would have lost her. Cause how you get him is how you lose him. Once Nene reached her claim to fame, Nene started acting like a common denominator. Started treating Greg like a common denominator. There's, as I mentioned earlier, there's a significant age gap. 13 years between Nene and Greg. So Greg controlled the marriage for many years. And this time, the tables had actually turned. The tables had turned. And um, Nene was the one making the money. Nene was the one in control. She did not need Greg not then like she needed him when she was younger. And Greg knew it. And that's probably why Greg was a lot more humble and, and pretty much allowed Nene to say and do what she wanted because he was now at her will. She was now at she she he he was now at her mercy. He wasn't making the money that Nene was making. Galatians chapter six verse nine through ten. And let us not be weary and well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So, nevertheless, tables had turned. Nene became the successful one. Nene's success now positioned her as the primary breadwinner and it placed the ball on her court to run things. And that's when the marriage became turbulent. That's when she ended up divorcing Greg in 2011. Now, what y'all also didn't know, this probably got past y'all too. When she first divorced Greg in 2011, during her duration on, on Housewives of Atlanta, Nene then started dating, and that's when she allegedly dated New Orleans NFL football player Charles Grant. That fling, or whatever you want to call it, left just as quick as it came. That's why some of you may remember it, some of you may not. Nene became Hollywood, and I think at this point in time, Greg became dull to her. And like a lot of these, a lot of people when they get in the industry, especially when they started off in before they got in the industry, they was in a struggle um, with their husband, with their wives, and for some reason, when that fame and that money and that notoriety, now you start looking at the people who was with you that struggled with you. Now you start looking at them um um as 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 uh as baggage i'm sure when nene ran into the money um she looked at greg different she looked at greg different and i think i'm certain greg knew that nene looked at him different um she was the one making the money she was the one that was successful 
Greg, I don't think was doing a whole lot. I can't discredit him and say that he was what he was or wasn't doing. But I believe that based off of Nini's ego and her attitude, that she started kind of perceiving Greg as a zero at this point. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing better than you. I'm the one holding us up. Not realizing that before she reached this fame and success that it was Greg who took care of her and held her up when she wasn't nobody, when she was just a country girl from Athens, Georgia, okay? And um, I think she started looking down on him, you know, like, you're nothing now, you know, and I'm sure Greg sensed that, and I think that's the reason Greg stayed so humble, because um, he knew that he was no longer in a position to really get funky with Nene, and Nene used that to her advantage. Uh, but Nene quickly found out when she tried to step out there and deal with that football player that um, he was not checking for her the way she was checking for him. She went right back into reality of, you know what, these dudes out here, they cool, but none of them know me like Greg. None of them are really humble to me and loving to me like Greg. I think it was a harsh reality check. I believe she wanted to get Hollywood on Greg and upgrade on him, get something bigger, better, younger, spunkier. I really believe once she ran into that money that Greg became stale to her. You know, Greg was older now. Uh, I, I think she kind of looked at him um, as, as somebody who was weak. Um, she wasn't really turned on as much, you know, money makes people funny. I, I, I commend you. Money makes people move different. It always does. And it always will. And, um, I think when she went out there thinking, because I'm Nene Leaks, I can get something better. I can do better. I can have better. And I think the industry showed her right away. Um, these dudes out here ain't going, you know. Uh, be a puppy to you like Greg. They're not going to humble themselves to you like Greg. So you may think you all of that, but these industry dudes don't look at you that way. So um, she discovered it wasn't all what she expected. And that's when she, that's what, that's my personal opinion. I think she realized trying to go out there and get something bigger and better that these industry dudes, they a handful. Okay, so she reunited with Greg back in 2013, and that's when she had her wedding spinoff, I Dream of Nene the Wedding. And sickness and health till death do us part. Things took a spin uh, for the worst when Greg Leakes was diagnosed with stage 3 cold and cancer. Nene seemed to be everywhere, but with her husband, like running her establishment. But although she was there for Greg from time to time and going to doctor's appointments and, and, um, dialysis and all of this stuff you know treatment and, and everything with greg um nene uh Gre greg's health continued to decline and based on nene's instagram posts at the time she was getting worn out with greg okay when greg's health continued to decline nene was feeling the funk you have to remember Greg always took care of Nene. And now it was Nene's turn to take care of Greg. Now, me personally, y'all, I have an aunt in my family right now who is in misery because of this ex exact situation. My uncle, um, just digressing, my uncle was always a hardworking man. He's been... Uh, employed with the U.S. Postal Service for years. So, you know, they've always made good money. Um, they've always had great benefits. You know, my uncle was always a very hardworking man. He took pride. This man never took a day off. Uh, out of 30, 20, 30, 30, 25, 30 plus years as a, a mail carrier, he never took a day off. Um, he was rewarded all type of awards, plats bonuses just a very dedicated worker you know back then men really really worked hard and stayed on the same job for years however his health started declining 
And even when he knew his health was declining, he was still getting up, going to work faithfully because he's always worked. He's never been a sit at home, lay on the sofa type of person. He was supposed to retire three times and he changed his mind. Okay? But life, there's this thing called life. Life does what it wants to do. You don't get to tell life what you want and don't want. And even, even though in his mind, he wanted to continue to keep working. His health and his body said, no, you're going to retire. And he finally made that decision when he passed out and collapsed during one of his routes. He finally gave up the ghost. Reality sunk in. I can't. I cannot low longer go on. I cannot work. I officially have to retire. So, uh, he's been he's been I think retired now for about two three years, and um, he can he just can't he don't have the strength to do the things he used to do. He's wheelchair bound. He's still able to drive and get himself around and do little things for himself, but he's wheelchair bound. Um, he's uh required to have a nurse who comes in and visit him regularly and all of this has made my aunt very bitter it has caused her to make a lot of chaos and create a lot of division within the family um because she's so miserable that she has to do everything for my uncle and she's frustrated because this man always took care of her and she never mentally prepared herself for the day that she was going to have to take care of him she never saw it coming. But, she, you know, my aunt was always kind of bougie and thought she was better than other people. So she always thought things would be the way that it was. My, she never paid bills, really. Uh, she's all set if my uncle was to pass away today. She, her house paid for it. She got nothing to worry about. But she's miserable. My uncle's wheelchair bound. She They can't go places together like they used to. And she's retired as well. So they both are home sitting around each other all day. Um, and um, they, they just pretty much have no life with each other or in their marriage at this point in time. So she's been really, you know, she's become a nasty person because she is angry that her husband cannot do the things he used to do. And it's because of life. His health has changed. And, you know, there's plenty of women who out there who have husbands that are sickly. And they still go places together. They still push them around in the wheelchair. You know, they travel. They still do things. My aunt just refuses to do that. She's used to my uncle being up, alive, and well, independent, self-sufficient. She never had to lift a finger. And now that he can, he's, he's no longer in a position to take care of himself, um, she's angry. She's angry with life. She's angry with the world. And, um, I think that kind of, you know, what Nene started going through. Nene did not see in a million years she was not to take care of Greg. Um, it became so frustrating for her to deal with Greg's health declining. So, during 2018... Nene was going on Twitter and being very open about how miserable she was having to deal with Greg and his health declining. And I don't think when she was posting, she realized that instead, I don't know if she thought it was going to make people empathize or sympathize with her and made people resent her. Like, really? Your husband is sickly. How are you feeling some type of way? But I'm going to read the post that she posted. Again, all of this dealing with somebody else's husband. This is the karma that you produce and you create for yourself. So, November 2018, this is what Nene posted on Twitter. I would just think if, if I have or had cancer, I would see life so differently. Not being mean, grouchy, and evil for no real reason. But that's me. Pray for me. So, all, you know, all of this stuff is old news. But this is just, I, I want y'all to know all of this. So y'all can see why Nene is, is, has gone through so much of the things that she has gone through. This is just karma collecting this debt. 
um, again, because you took somebody else's husband and you had no remorse. Now you want people to have remorse for you. Okay, Arion Air Mattress. So, at the time, Greg was sickly. And anybody who's dealt with a loved one being sickly, whether it's your husband, your mother, or a father, whoever, um, sickly people become very mean and grouchy. And a lot of that has to do with the... The, the, the fact that the sickness is taking a toll on them and they realize that they really cannot do the things they want to do and it makes them very angry and I'm sure Greg was just as angry that he had to depend on Nene because you have to realize men have pride especially men who have always worked who have always provided now I can't say this is for the builder bums who don't who never worked who never provided to care of their family but men who have always been the leaders who have always been the ones that took care of everything when they help the clients it does it mentally takes them through a lot my uncle went through that having to have a nurse wipe his behind and in and, and things that he felt like he should have been able to do for himself i'm sure greg became frustrated seeing Nene frustrated and it became a domino effect there was a lot Nene and Greg was going through at this stage in his life because I'm sure Greg knew in his heart that Nene really did not want to take care of him and I think that's that that takes a toll when a person knows that, that they are sickly and the person who is left having to take care of them is um it, it, it is it is has never really had much patience with them because I'm gonna just be frank. This is my personal opinion. I, I could be wrong. I'm just look. I'm the outside looking in. Um, uh, I don't know everything from a can of paint, but I do believe that Nene. Um, I believe her love for him began to decline as much as his health did because. She's used to this man catering to her. And now it was her turn to cater to him. And I even believe that Greg knew this. I think Greg was angry. Listen, I think Greg was angry that he he got sick so Nene would have to take care of him. I think he was mad at himself for being sick because he worshipped and treasured Nene just that much. He didn't want Nene to have to take care of him in this manner. I believe, I strongly believe Greg did not leave here in peace. I don't think he had any real peace because he knew that uh, his wife did not want to take care of him in the manner in which she had to. I think Greg was more mad at himself than he was with Nene, which is the reason why he was mean and grouchy. And Nene was looking at it like, you just being mean, you being nasty to me for nothing. I think he was mad that he got sick and it put Nene in a position in which she had to help him. Because I believe he treasured that woman just that much. He didn't want Nene to have to lift a finger for him. But this particular time, he really couldn't help it. Life had his way. Life took over. And I believe and I believe that's why he was angry. He didn't want Nene to have to do anything. But life did what it what it chose and it took a toll on the both of them. And then she posted a second tweet. Again, all of this is old stuff. Um she told almost 2 million followers that the situation is more complicated than it appears. I'm always, she put in caps, the bad guy. So I'll take that if only you knew. So when she posted that first uh, tweet about him being mean and grouchy, a lot of people started going in like, Nene, come on. The man is sick. This your husband. Get over it. Stop thinking about yourself. Blase, blase, blah. blah, blah. And I get it. She was just venting. Listen, being a caregiver, a caretaker, it ain't no joke. That's why my aunt had to get a nurse to come in and help her. Lifting up these grown men, trying to wipe their behinds, trying to feed them. It's a lot. Anybody who's a nurse, my hat's off to y'all. I commend y'all. Y'all have my blessing. That's something I don't have a gift in doing. And if you don't have the gift in that, you will end up abusive. You will end up treating the client. 
really badly. And um, I'm sure it was going that way. And Greg saw it. He saw Nini's frustration. Nini also expressed similar sentiments in the comments section of Greg's Instagram after Greg posted this. Now, this is what Greg posted to all men about loving forgiveness. Um, in the since deleted comments captured by the shade room, Nini told Greg to take his own advice. So I guess Greg was saying um, to all men, you, 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 we have to learn how to be loving and forgiving. And that's when she took it upon herself, Nini being a petty person as she was. Well, you need to do everything you posted. Practice what you preach. She, she said before adding, you need to pray for yourself. This mean, grouchy, evil stuff you pull in these days are not cool. So, I believe they both was feeding off each other's energy. I believe Greg was cause also a little upset that Nene was still mobile, able to get around and do things without him. He couldn't follow her like a puppy. He couldn't keep up with her in every move. I think he was mad about that as well. I think Nene was mad. Um, cause from what I told him, what I remember when he was going through the stage of sickness, Greg was calling Nene every two minutes. Come fluff my pillow. Come scratch my elbow. Come rub my knee. He, I think, cause men could be manipulative too, even in sickness. I think he was capitalizing off of that and was running Nene raggedy. Again, all of this stems from Greg, the way you left your wife. And Nene, the fact you had no remorse when you took this man from his wife, bo both of them, they not understanding. Everything they going through at this time had everything to do with the karma that they produced. Greg was doing the most because I think he was also upset because it go both ways. The person that has to take care of the sick person gets frustrated having to cater to that sick person. And the sick person gets frustrated with the person that's catering to them. They still have their freedom. They still get to move around. They still get to be mobile. It's an even exchange. Okay. So Nene previous opened up to People Magazine about caring for Greg as she continued to help him fight through his cancer at the time admitting that it wasn't easy she said um it's very very hard to be a caretaker people call and say how's greg doing and want to throw the phone and say how the f am i doing she said no she said at the time she wanted to throw the phone and wanted people to ask her how she was doing i'm going crazy over here greg is wearing me out i'm not good at this s-h-i-t i would rather hire somebody greg doesn't want me to hire somebody but that's but I'm just not good. I'm not good at fluffing the pillow. I'm good at buying a pillow. So as you can see, listen, this karma was coming into full tuition. Greg did not want Nene to be uh, set free from having a, to endure um, all of the misery he was going through. He wanted her to be miserable. I mean, I get it. He was sick, but I think the other side, he wanted her to be stagnant like he was stagnant. You got some men that pull that. When they get sick, they want the whole world of a revolve around them. They want the kids to keep coming home, checking on them, want the wife to keep doing everything. Some Sometimes these men could even be manipulative even in sickness. Greg was wearing her out. I'm sure he was. He didn't even want her to hire help. He wanted her to be the help. Just being difficult, complicated. Knowing at the same time, you know, honestly, Nene still had a life. You know, it wouldn't have been fair for her to just completely give up everything just to take care of him. But at the same time, Nene was trying to avoid and, and jump ship from responsibility because she's used to Greg being responsible for her. Now it's her turn to be responsible for him. She, she can't handle it. So both of them pretty much were screwed with each other at this point. So... Uh, mostly, you know, uh, she said his illness has caused a bit of division in the marriage at the time. How much he has changed as a person, his whole attitude changed. Um, I feel like that day I lost my husband, our whole dynamic changed. Sometimes I forget that he's sick and I need to remind myself because he's so on the edge. He's not nice, but he can't help it. So eventually Greg passed away. 
set both of them free at 2021. And that is when Nene started slowly but surely creeping up on Naomi's page, leaving emojis the first initial month. And that's when they decided to go public three months later. Now, uh, everybody knows that Naomi and Nene met through Peter, Cynthia Bailey's ex-husband. Um, he's a fashion designer. You know, I mean, he has, he's an entrepreneur. Um, he has all of these, this, um, this business, these companies going. The man is definitely a money maker. So, um, got to give respect to that. Um, however, the man too was also married. Again, Naomi was married and Nene once again did not care and started dating and getting involved with Naomi anyway. So supposedly based on what Nene said, um, Greg gave her his blessing to see other people before he died. Again, that's what she said. We don't know. Only her, God, and Greg knows how that conversation really went. And he probably did. You know, Greg was a, 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 a people pleaser, especially when it came to Nene. So, and he knew Nene was going to do what she wanted to do anyway. So, he probably did. Um, that is when she started dealing with Naomi. And um, they came out publicly with their relationship. She posted several pictures of him and her together on Instagram. And um, basically, she was gloating about how happy she was with him and how she couldn't start smiling around Naomi. So, um, a lot of people was kind of taken back that uh, she had moved on so quickly and her head was already in the cloud. And she was just gloating um, like um, Naomi was the best thing that happened to her. I didn't even hear her gloat this much about Greg. Um, throughout all the years that we've known them together since the show, but let her tell it. Naomi treated her like a queen. He's the best thing that happened to her. So, um, again, uh, Naomi designs and owns menswear brand, Naomi Couture, and it is based in Charlotte, North Carolina. So he sells custom suits, tuxedo shirts, shoes, and accessories online, um, in his brick and mortar storefront. So, um... It's his his um designs uh they originate from his African heritage, and um you know again he's very successful and he has a passion for fashion which is a great thing. So, however, Naomi is a father of all three. Uh, October twenty one he posted a picture of his youngest son wearing one of his designs on Instagram. So um rumors of the romance between Leeks and Naomi first surface when she posted photos from her 54, 54th birthday, December 15, 2021. And her family, her friends was there in the course. And um, she posted videos and photos of them. And um, things became pretty interesting because after she became very public with their relationship, that it was that is when it was brought to the forefront that Naomi's uh, wife at the time, Malomine, I'm going to say her name is Malomine, 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 um, Sayo, Sayo, meaning she, of course, has his last name or whatever. Um, she sued Leaks for causing her emotional distress, humiliation, and, um, and a loss of affection. So, you know, this is a true law, and I think it's probably like 10 states who got this where uh, a wife could actually sue her mistress. And I guarantee you, if that was a national law, women would think twice before messing with a married man. If this was actually a law and you can get sued, I guarantee you, um, the side chick population would definitely decline. So, um, TMZ reported June 2nd that uh, she sought over 100,000 in damages for the breakup of her marriage which is legal reason to sue in the state of North Carolina. Uh, following day, Leaks posted a video on Instagram saying that the story was inaccurate. I'm already out here, a husband stealer, and this is too much, she said. Hey, ain't nobody out here stealing husbands, are they? 
I would never. Nobody wants to steal nobody else's problems, honey. Um, well, you did it twice. Um, you did it with Greg. So it's no surprise that you have done it um again for the second time. You 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 don't have no respect for people's marriage. And um you done proved that. You definitely done proved that. And that is why his wife at the time, which I allegedly he's divorced now, but it doesn't negate the fact he was married. Okay, so nevertheless, all of this, you know, started coming at Nene. And this ain't the first, she is not the first woman who's been sued by somebody else's wife. Singer Fantasia was also sued um, by her former baby daddy and Tom Cook, his wife at the time, also sued um, as well. But the judge ruled in favor of Fantasia and Cook and they found out um, that, that uh, he was separated from his wife at the time. So, uh, yeah, so and Fantasia got dodged a bullet on that one. But um, moving right along. Ray Charles can see there was so much disconnect um, between Nene and Naomi. Looking at all the pictures, if you Google them and you put in Naomi and Nene, Nene was, you can tell, she appeared to be more into Naomi than Naomi seemed to be into her. And this doesn't mean that Naomi did not like her, that Naomi didn't have some feelings for her but i don't think she was he was feeling her the way she was feeling him i truly believe um nene had been with greg for many many years she's used to being with the man she's used to being in a relationship so when greg died feeling the reality of his absence i really think it took a toll on her and she moved in rather quickly on the first guy she felt that she could have some type of connection with. Nene did not name, did not know Naomi very well, and she moved moved on with him relatively quickly. But if you look at her past history, she did it with Greg. Married him quick, had Brett from him quick, all of that within a short length of time. Nene is known to move move in on men very quickly. She does not have all this confidence like she pretends she does because if so, she would take her time. She wouldn't feel so pressured and uh, I got to hurry up and get me a man and, and, and get somebody. So you can just tell by the body language. Um, Nene was forcing chemistry between her and Naomi. And it just was not there. And I could tell she had been struggling um, with putting on this united front with Naomi for a very long time. First of all, Naomi is uh, of Nigerian descent. And Nigerian men, they have totally different outlook on, on marriage, on relationships. Their culture is different from us. And I believe Nene thought she could take her hood rat, ratchet American, um, old, old hot girl summer ways or whatever, to Naomi and he will openly accept it. I believe it's been a struggle from day one. And again, Nene, her image has always been um, important to her. Nene likes to look like she has things together even when she really does not. So, I, I like I stated, I posted pictures showing the body language how she leaning into him, she holding his hand, she's grabbing him by his arm. And I'm like, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out this man was not into Nene like she was into him. But you couldn't tell Nene that. She was very sure of herself. Nene not only, I believe, was catching it with um, Naomi, um, forcing his fake chemistry because she wanted to avoid being alone and by herself. At the time, she was also going through it with Bravo after making some serious claims against Bravo and Andy. Um, and she basically, you know, 
sabotage her own career, you know, by challenging the big dogs, um, you know, uh, in in the Bravo, um, in the Bravo network, you know. But that's another conversation. But we knew it was trouble in paradise when Nene made a recent post about narcissistic men. She posted, warning to all ladies, narcissistic men are the worst people on the planet. They come to destroy. And another post she wrote, narcissistic men will slander your name to anyone that will listen. Beware, they are not telling the truth. Now, um, it, that could have been in relation to Andy, um, being that her and Andy are not on the best of terms. Or um, it could have been uh, her low-key blasting Naomi, um, implying that a narcissistic is the devil. I'm, I'm willing to think it, it, it's definitely in relation to um, Naomi. I think Naomi is a handful. I don't think she was never really able to control Naomi like she was able to do Greg. Because guess what? She further goes on and says this. They believe every argument is caused by you because to them, there was no problem with their actions until you reacted to them. They 100% believe you are the problem and they are the victim, she added. So this is how you can tell it was more in relation to Naomi because that's what couples do. They argue, they have disagreements. I don't think it was so much related to Andy um, and what she's going through with Bravo Network. But she said... Uh, they 100% believe you are the problem and they are the victim. Um, Naomi is just as aggressive as um, Nene. You can tell he's not one of those men. He's not going to back down. Um, he thinks he's just as pretty, if not prettier, than Nene. She met her match. She met somebody that was not going to um, kiss her behind every time she bent over. And I believe because of her image, um, she did all the butt kissing. Because Nene does not like to look like a failure. Especially because she has Bravo watching her. Friendships that she burnt along the lines. She burnt a lot of bridges. And she don't want nobody seeing her fall or crumble or thinking that she's not on her A game. So I strongly believe she tried to hold it down. And it just became unbearable. Um, even with all the surgery she had done, even though she bleached her skin, um, if a man ain't into you, he just not into you. Um, the only man that was sincerely into her was Greg. I don't think she'll ever get that lucky again. Um, and that, that's just the reality of it. Now, not only did it finally come to light, she admitted to her breakup with Naomi. That breakup has such an effect on her, y'all. Check this out, ladies. Nene decided to go live and she felt the need to address the breakup. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and play a snippet of that because I want you ladies to listen. And, I, and I'm going to dissect it. I'm going to break it down because I want y'all to be able to read in between the lines because she's kind of really telling on herself with the live and admitting um that things weren't gravy on the home front and I've been peeped it out I've been um I figured uh it just wasn't none of what she was trying to make it out to be so I'm going to go ahead and play this clip, y'all, because I want y'all to hear this, and we're going to break it down into small supplements. So we're going to go ahead and play the clip. Hey, you guys. So I wanted to jump on here for a few minutes. I came home early. Uh, I was just sitting looking out the window, and um, the last few days, I was just trying to focus and think. The last few days, I've gotten lots of emails and text messages and DMs from people asking me to comment on this subject or comment on that subject or that subject. And uh, I kind of don't. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I am moving into my South era, and my main focus is my happiness. And um, I'm not the kind of person that holds grudges. Um, you know, like any human, you get mad for a little while, but then after that, you know, I kind of like to let it go and, and just kind of let God and move on. That's just how I am as a person in my real life. Um, I just feel like if you hold on to grudges, um, they hold on to you and to your energy and, and to those kind of things. So I don't want to hold on to a grudge. I want to move into my soft era. Uh, most of my life, I have taken care of the people in my life, my family, and some friends at times. And uh, I just want to, for once, uh, just be kind of in my soft era. Maybe somebody take care of me. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. Um, hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just in a different place right now. So um, I don't want to comment on any of the things that everybody is asking me to comment on. Uh, That's just not my focus at the moment. Um, Yeah. Soft era. That's my focus. Soft era. So if any of you want to talk soft era, you can send me an email at booknini at gmail.com. But when you see me out and I'm floating around, just know that soft era okay first of all i don't like that term soft era because we already got a lot of men around here you know already saying we as black women are 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 too aggressive we're too loud we're too boisterous so now she has created another label for them to say black women need to be more into their soft era no, um, you don't need to be worried about self er- being softer. You need to do what's called self-reflecting because evidently, Nene, you keep making the same mistakes. Now, I'm going to go back and play it one more time, but this time I'm going to interject in it and um, and, and give y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm going to break down what she's really saying, but she's not going to say it that way because, you know, Nene is the queen of deflecting. So let's go back. Hey, you guys. So I wanted to jump on here for a few minutes. I came home early. Uh, I was just sitting looking out the window. And um, the last few days, I was just trying to focus and think. The last few days, I've gotten lots of emails and text messages and DMs from people asking me to comment on this subject or comment on that subject or that subject. And uh, I kind of don't. Okay, I know you don't want to comment on it because at this point, you're embarrassed. Uh, You did not, first of all, you wouldn't even came live had it not been put out there that you and Ioni have decided to call it quits. You would have been better off not even coming on here even addressing it because you're contradicting yourself saying you want to address it, but you kind of don't. But you are addressing it, the fact that you had decided to go live. But we know you decide to go live, but you're not going to address it because you're too embarrassed. So this is another form of what's called gaslighting and deflecting. But at this point, because of her pride, she knows she has to say something. Because people go, people going to catch on, and evidently it's officially over. You're not going to be able to fake the funk and keep holding Naomi's hands on the red carpet, coming out of fine dining restaurants. So at this point, you know you got to say something, but you really ain't saying nothing. You would have been better off not even addressing it, and nobody would have cared. But let's continue. Um, I am moving into my soft era, and. My main focus is my happiness. And um, I'm not the kind of person that holds grudges. Um, You know, like any human, you get mad for a little while, but then after that, you know, I kind of like to let it go and and just kind of let God and move on. That's just how I am. And we know you are the type who will will, will let go and not hold on, especially if if it's something you know that's going to make you see yourself for who you really are. No different that when you took Greg from his wife and literally you didn't take him. He did comply. 
he did decide to go along with you but that is your character nini that's what you've always been known to do when you do something really effed up the people or jacked up the people your way of dealing with it is by not dealing with it you let go and you you throw it on jesus i'm gonna let go and let god handle it and oh yeah god has been handling it that's why all of this stuff that has been happening to you the way it's been ha it's been happening to you so again this is another form of deflecting person in my real life um i just feel like if you hold on to grudges um they hold on to you and to your energy and, and to that's not holding on to grudges that's called holding on and not taking accountability you don't want to hold you don't want to take account of, you don't want to take accountability because now it makes you have to answer for the things that you have done you call it grudges i call it you not taking accountability those kind of things so i don't want to hold on to a grudge i want to move into my south era uh most of my life i have taken care of the people in my life my family and some friends at times and uh, i just want to for once uh just be kind of in my south era maybe somebody take care of me i'm not sure we'll see what happens um hmm um I don't know. I don't know. I'm just in a different place right now. So um, I don't want to comment on any of the things that everybody is asking me to comment on. Uh, that's just not my focus at the moment. Um, yeah. Soft era. Okay. And I believe it at that. Soft era. So um, I don't know if she means. I'm. A, I, I, first of all, I disagree with the soft era, but I do believe you need to humble yourself. That is Nene's biggest problems. She needs to humble herself. I'm not trying to be funny. You have, to, you took a lot of L's, Nene. You have had a lot of L's between Bravo, blackballing you, and this doesn't mean you can't rise, you can't be successful, you can't bounce back. This doesn't mean that you got to walk around looking sad and depressed like the world owes you anything. I get that. However, everything that has transpired um you got to go all the way back you have to do some heavy repenting you got to repent you got to ask god for forgiveness for all the people you have wronged you have wronged a lot of friendships on the show you have done a lot of women in you have degraded women disrespected women a lot of people this is the problem with the world people think they can just move on and just say you know i'm gonna give it to god a lot of times god wants you to be transparent and admit your mistakes admit where you've gone wrong in life and truly repent cleanse yourself with god and guess what it doesn't hurt going back and telling people you know what if i wronged you in some way forgive me you'll be surprised how god will, will will uplift the burdens out of your life if you sincerely get down and mean business and you seek his forgiveness you know and he will open the pathway but what's blocking a lot of people's blessings is the bitterness um not apologizing for the people they have wronged and it, it god god does still um give us trials and tribulations regardless of how good you are or bad you are but when you truly repent god can start opening bigger and better doors for you because you have cleansed yourself and you have repented um nini is not one of those ones i don't think she's truly come to that she's just going to keep deflecting and moving on trying to find other things to focus on and you know um that's going to be her way of not really having to acknowledge or take accountability but my whole purpose of this content and i'm going to get ready to shut it down i know it's hella long um this is the reason why i'm not going to put any clips and stuff in it and really edit it like i would like um because this video will go into two three hours if i put all my editing because i do all my own editing and everything so um i i truly believe that um nini has to do some self-reflecting uh she's she's been so self-absorbed um that she has not really um took the time to focus on how she has handled things how she has treated people and um i think that is what's been hindering her from being as successful as she could have possibly been nini has burnt a lot of bridges with friends with family home sister said she doesn't have much of anything to do with them and hollywood does have a way of changing people money period changes people when people 
um, become besties with the almighty dollar. They don't feel like they have to respect other people. They don't feel like they got to humble themselves. They feel like they can discard people and throw people away all kind of way. But when that money is gone and you're by yourself, you're going to find out that the things that are the most valuable are the things that don't come with a price tag. You need people to have compassion for you, support you, care for you because you never know when you're going to when 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 something is going to drastically change you in your life and what you're going to need that support nini i was crazy about her i was a fan of hers at one point in time we have seen nini drastically change not just her nose and her and her um skin complexion we've seen her change her attitude we've seen her be very mean very nasty very vicious and um this is the reason why ain't too many people having too much empathy or sympathy for nini i do empathize with her loss losing her husband i could empathize with her on that aspect but as far as her and ioni not working out girl you knew naomi was a married man like you knew greg was a married man so we're going to use your same words keep your legs closed for married men not only that another fact i forgot um naomi's wife is vice president of his company okay so hanini thought she was just going to ride off into the sunset with naomi um this man has a lot of ties to his wife not just with marriage, but with business. She ain't cared about none of that. So again, as a side chick, your karma may not come right then and there. But years later on down the line, you don't know what you're going to face with somebody else's husband. Nene is a prime example, you know. And this is not to say that what she went through couldn't happen to anybody. But it does serve as a reference guide as to you got to be very careful when you decide to um, get involved with the married man because you are bringing an all kind of karma upon yourself. So anyway, y'all, I'm going to get ready to shut it down. Um, I know I got a lot of content I have to do. I got to do my members only. So I'm going to work on that this evening. So we got some things we got to catch up on, y'all. But I thought it was imperative that I shared this content with y'all to show y'all the, the damage, the karma that you create for yourself when you get involved with somebody else's husband. You just bring all these curses upon your life. Married men are a curse to women. Do not get involved with somebody else's husband because you are not going to be ready and fully prepared for the consequences that you're going to have to encounter for it. So anyway, y'all, it's been a blessing. Please make sure y'all hit that like button before you leave. Share the video. Like the video. Um, members only. Um, I got y'all coming up. I got some content for you. So be on standby for that. I'm back in business, y'all. Now that everything has leveled up and straightened out. So